Hey guys, welcome to the Infocast, and uh, today I'm continuing with the uh, Xbox uh, Summer Fest event and the Ubisoft Forward Summer Fest event, uh, and I'm going to cover Sony's state of play really quickly, just to show what they announced, and uh, just give my opinion on what the uh, best one was and the best trailers and all that, and my favorite games of all, and you can kind of see I got a lineup listed up here. Uh, I'm going to continue with what I was talking about uh, last week with Assassin's Creed Shadows mentioning uh, there there should at least be gameplay that the character didn't uh, matter, but when we get to that, I'll go into it more um, really quickly. Here are the latest comments, and uh, someone told me this didn't age well, <laughs> and that's what I responded, that... Um, I told them, uh, yeah, I guess it is acceptable to pay 60 bucks for a six-hour campaign because it is acceptable if it is an MMO. And 80 bucks for the complete version, that's with the episodes 1, 2, and 3. But hey, in a few days, Elden Ring DLC asking for way less will age better, I guess. Now to see the next Destiny DLC and pricings. Let's just hope they finally give us Destiny 3 and return all vaulted content. Then you can come back and see how well this video ages. And uh, yeah, I'm serious about that. It's like, I, I seen what they announced, Destiny 2 Echoes or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's for another video because I want to do more research. I want to actually play the final shape. I might end up getting it just to play it and see what's going on. I hear the buzz. It is positive. It's getting positive reviews. The story they're saying is really good. So hey, if it is, I'll give it a try and I'll give my honest opinion on it. But when I made this video, I mean, I stand by it like 60 bucks, 80 bucks for the complete Destiny 2 final shape. That That's way too much. And this isn't the first time they asked for that. I mean, there was Lightfall, Witch Queen, Shadow uh, or whatever the Moon one was called. And then Into the Light or New Light. One of those was free. Like, I'll get into the breakdown of all that. And even before that the first two DLCs when Destiny 2 launched and they announced those first two DLCs that you cannot play anymore. You cannot even play the original game and all the vaulted content. So let's hope they bring all that back and let's hope they even announce a Destiny 3 after whatever episodes they have. But I'll go into it deeper. So I just wanted to uh, reply to this guy and that's what I did here. And then, yeah, even though I replied uh, a day ago, and then someone mentioned something about Demon Souls, a uh, voice actor. He really liked that. It sounded like Shang Tsung. And uh, I went back and watched it because I wasn't sure which guy he was talking about, but it looks like someone you challenge in battle. And wow, like, th this is already three years old, and this was the uh, remake. It still looks really good. Like, I don't know. I think I think the graphics are actually better than Elden Ring unless you play on PC. This is on PS5. He kind of looks like Shang Tsung too. But yeah, I don't know if it's the same guy. Well, it says... Reminds me of Kiryu. Oh, okay. So it's not. He just sounds like him. That's pretty cool. Anyways, thanks for pointing that out. Um, Astro, I'll trust Triest Gaming. Appreciate the comment. And looks like you got a nice channel here. Dragon's Lair. Okay. That's really old. And uh, Ragnarok. God of War is a really good game. If you guys haven't played Valhalla, I uh, highly recommend it. <coughs> okay, we're going to move on to the really quickly tackle Sony State of Play. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to compare it to uh, Xbox. I'll just say off the bat, it was really disappointing. And it's even more disappointing once you see everything else at the Summerfest. So Sony tries to uh, sneak in early. They they did this multiple times when they first left E3. And they created their own state of play. But 
I don't know. It, went, it wasn't that good. Okay, let's start out. You see the Concord gameplay. I have no interest for this game. I think it's like an Overwatch type of game, but characters don't interest me and nothing about it interested me. Like, I think at this point I'm sick of these type of games like Overwatch and uh, Valorant. Like, I'm, I'm more realistic with the uh, CSGO and uh, if I... If I do play something in that realm, it, I want to see a Team Fortress 3. That that will probably bring me back, but... Yeah, I did, I did not like Concord at all. Uh, God of War, PC announcement, that's really good. Really good for people that didn't get a chance to play it. And it tells me that I don't need a PS5 anymore, and I should... Like I already have gone all full PC, I should continue on that route. And even though... When, when did it originally come out? Let's see here. 2022 we're in 2024 do they have an exact date and September okay so two years uh, it used to uh, be three years so not bad two years later I mean you can wait then again you'll get it spoiled so I understand people that but I think in the future with PS6 and that, I'm going to think twice before jumping on that. Dynasty Warriors Origins. Oh, they still make these games. <laughs> I mean, I used to like them in the PS2 era. I don't know if they've gotten any better, if they're more the same. But no interest. Infinity Nikki, I have no idea. Nor do I care. Then again, I should, uh, it looks like a Pokemon Snap. I should at least give it a chance, see what it is. E yeah, not my type of game. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Where winds meet. I don't know what this is. And another Souls type of game. Like they're, they're they're overcrowding this genre. They're all trying to live off the Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Success, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Neo. Jeez, it's just too much. Oversaturated with this type of genre. Like I don't even care, honestly. It does look good though. Then Ballad of Antar, what is this going to be, another one? This looks like uh, a lot closer, maybe For Honor, but then again, you got these mythical looking creatures. So again, it reminds me like it's another Elden Ring. I don't know. I don't know what to think. It's too much. Too much of these type of games. Sky Dances, Behemoth. Lower it a little bit. Developers of the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I don't. I don't think that's a good thing to put up there. I don't think that had much success. You know, this this looks good. Reminds me of Dark Messiah, Might and Magic. Oh, wow. See, th this is something I'd be interested in. It looks uh, different. S something new, something we haven't gotten in a while. Uh, developers announced a new VR game. I guess it did see success. I don't even know. Honestly, I haven't. I'm a I'm a huge Walking Dead fan, but um, the game didn't interest me. Yeah, it looks it looks a little bit still. I don't know.
get a quick Metacritic score look at it. Okay, okay, not not too bad. I mean, it's above average. Alien Rogue Incursion. And by the way, I do like uh, using IGN here because they wrap up, they show everything in order. So props to them on that. I know uh, there's, there's a lot of hate for IGN, but they've been around the longest. So, you know, they make they make the most money, obviously, out of gaming websites. Not not including uh, new newer streamers and YouTubers out of all the like the big websites. I think they're still the biggest. Oh, it's coming to VR. Okay, nice. I mean, I. It's been a while since we played an alien game. That looks good. Marvel Rivals. Um, I'm not even sure what this is. What type of game I mean. Looks pretty good. I mean... Looks like a live service game though, but... Oh wait, no, no, it's PvP. It's... Don't tell me another Overwatch type. Uh, I lost all interest now. Has this been out for a while? Why do I feel like... Yeah, this has been out for a while. PS5. Oh, it's coming to PS5. Yeah, I guess people that like that genre, it's good, but uh, it's become stale for me. Until Dawn gets a new trailer. Fall really art. Why didn't they just make a sequel? What? P PC and PS5 newer graphics I mean it's time to make a sequel that game came out years ago Path of uh, Exile 2 is this game still in early access wait what releasing oh wow I, I remember playing this a long or was it part 1 I'm thinking of maybe it was part 1 so anyways, and then Silent Hill 2 I talked about last time, and uh, this was the trailer I showed with the nurses. So uh, it finally has a release date. Oh, did I mention that? October 8th, not bad. Uh, amazing. Good good time around Halloween. Monster Hunter Wild. I mean, this is good. This is going to be good. Definitely. Uh, they do make a lot of these, too. Uh, the last one I beat was on Switch. I think I, I mentioned that last time. So why not? Um, this this is probably going to be bigger like the Iceborne one and Monster Hunter World. I think this is that official sequel, not the Switch one. The Switch I felt was a smaller game. Um, and th this is the, the one I'm excited for is Astro Bot. I really enjoyed that little tech demo on PS5, so it's great. It's getting its own full game, and it's coming this September. So, uh, yeah, Sony wasn't the greatest. Um, if I had to rank this, I'd give it a C, at least average. At least there's a uh, few games I'm interested in here. And then uh, I'll, I'll say it straight up right here. Probably give this uh, an A. Microsoft really killed it. Because the announcements and the trailers, like, really good, really good stuff. Uh, Black Ops 6, uh, honestly, I didn't even watch this. But, um, I mean, you can expect a new Call of Duty. It's going to play very similar. Black Ops plays different than the Modern Warfare ones. Well, let's, let's check it out. Are they kind of trying to lean towards the first Black Ops? And is this just going to be a cutscene trailer? You know, there's some in-engine stuff. There's that main character from uh, Cold War. Okay, so there's a lot of set pieces, scripted events. Looks like uh, it's going to have a single player, which is good. I think it was Black Ops 4 didn't have a single player and it only had online. Oh, and you got uh, Frank Woods. One of the staple characters like uh, Captain Price in the Modern Warfare series. I wonder if they'll have uh, Mason, Alex Mason, who was voiced by Sam Worthington in the first one. 
So interesting, yeah. I mean, uh, I think I'm kind of leaning towards Black Ops being the uh, better Call of Duty nowadays. But even though with all the success of Modern Warfare, I'm more hyped for this. I like Cold War. It felt better multiplayer versus to me than Modern Warfare. But of course, uh, the zombies is the staple of the uh, franchise for Black Ops and the uh, modern modern com community, the workshop for Black Ops Three on Steam. If you haven't checked that out, it's still very active, very fun to play. And uh, this is one of the the biggest hype games that I really enjoy and I cannot wait for. It's like medieval Doom. Really good announcement. Really, really good to see this all the new weapons the shield all that you can bet there's some amazing soundtrack it's just just fucking sick Like we're getting Doom gears and Fable and all that. Like all, all you have to do is give Doom and you, you would have destroyed uh, anything PlayStation had. Then again, there's different titles like the Astro Bot is a different genre. Fucking sick. State of Decay 3, I, I did enjoy part 2 on Game Pass. And what's crazy is that this is all coming on Game Pass. It looks like I can see a price hike coming soon to Game Pass again. Oh, nice. Knives Out 3. And then you got the uh, Dragon Age, the Vel Velgard. Um, I did read the complaints on this, that it's looking more cartoony and less like uh, an original Dragon Age game. They do bring back some known characters. But I don't know. I maybe the car the characters are looking cartoony, but the environments still kind of look uh, realistic and less artistic. But it looks like you got classes now, and we'll see. We'll see how this pans out. It's, it seems to focus on these two, or oh, they're looking at the main character, which is probably going to be the character we get to customize with our whatever classes we pick and th that's what this trailer just shows off classes so willing t to see more before I jump to conclusion a lot of comments jump to conclusion uh, just by the looks they're not liking the art style uh, kind of reminds me how Diablo 3 a lot of people didn't like the uh, 2 to 3 graphical look how it looked more artistic and then 4 they changed it back so hopefully that's not the case with this and I mean, either way, again, the gameplay's fun. I'll still enjoy it, but I do understand the complaints on that. Fallout 76. Uh, I don't care about this anymore. Get that game out of here. I'm surprised they're still trying, and I know it's more active, and there's people that like that game, but just get that game out of here. <laughs> Starfield DLC. Okay, I'm surprised. I'm surprised they're releasing this. Like, I don't know. Maybe they should have moved on with this game kept it to the uh, wor workshop for the modders to do everything but it's expected I mean with Fallout they did release four expansions I don't think we'll get four expansions like that with fall like Fallout 3 actually I think Fallout 4 kind of half-assed it we never know look Fallout 76 is still getting expansions so that's that is a good thing that Bethesda does not give up on their the games they released and they know they have fans for certain games and they have been in improving Starfield a lot. Uh, you can finally like drive around on planets. You don't have to walk or fly around with the jetpack all the time. Taking forever to get from one side to the other. Th this was a surprise to see that they announced it during uh, Summerfest. Because normally Blizzard has their own uh, event. But that's cool to see it in a Microsoft event. I mean, that's good. Microsoft's using all the guns they got. Even though with all the layoffs, they still have these heavy hitters. And looks like, I mean, we might see World of Warcraft on consoles one day. Who knows? 
Uh, I think this was more of the uh, what the developer say. It's like not Final Fantasy, but it's an older. It's it's similar gameplay like Final Fantasy. There was another. Was it Legend of Dragoon? Either way, it looks good. Good graphics. Turn-based RPG. I mean, if you're a fan of those games, uh, you're gonna enjoy this. It, it seems like Microsoft had something for everyone during this press conference. This looks cartoony. New IP, it looks like. Kind of looks similar to that Sony game uh, that came out more recently. Can't remember the name. It's kinda, it was open world, though, I think. This looks more linear, actually. What was that name? Now I, now I gotta figure out what it was called. And they're still advertising Last of Us. How many times they released that crap? Living off of its success. Uh, open world, maybe. Now let's go to narrative. I don't think it had a good narrative, though. I played the demo and it kind of failed. Or it did fail, actually, not kind of. Oh, it was by Square Enix. Shit, what was the name of that game? Let's just go Square Enix game releases. I think it was 2022. This is what happens when I want to remember something. I just start looking. Ah, Forspoken. This was it, right? I think it was Forspoken. Yup, yup, Forspoken. So it kind of reminded me of Forspoken there. That title, what was that one called? No. South of Midnight, and yeah, I had a uh, main character who's a woman. Metal Gear Solid, and that's not why it reminded me of it. <laughs> that's not why I'm saying that. Uh, the mystical powers and the boss fights, kind of similar. Only first spoken was open world. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater. It was impressive what they showed. It looks uh, one to one like the original few character changes I'll go into in a little bit and that's where the controversy kicks off again so some of you guys might be thinking I'm baiting you with the uh, the art that I'm gonna put for this but I'll get to it Sea of Thieves season 13 that's cool that's still going I mean I would recommend this over Skull and Bones Flintlock guy. Uh, what is this? I don't remember this. This is how I watch my trailers, just skipping through when I'm not that interested. <laughs> new IP, I mean, it's always good to try new things. Just don't know who's the audience for this type of game. Is it a co-op game? Unnoticed by players was found. Yeah, unnoticed. Definitely unnoticed. The next game of from the team. Ashen at E44 Games. I've never heard of that. The flashy third-person action game is this explosive souls-like. Come on. Come on. Stop with this genre. 
and July 18 on Game Pass. So I guess uh, I get to try it on there since I have the uh, subscription. Perfect Dark Reboot official gameplay trailer and it looks really good. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like the graphics look amazing. Look at that. It looks really good. Some mirrors arch park parkouring. <laughs> All right, that was a little bit unrealistic, but I'm trying to be cool. Uh, do you, you don't only get a pistol in the old ones, right? It looks good. Either way, uh, I'll probably enjoy it. Age of Mythology, nice. Strategy Lovers. Diablo 4. Oh, uh, this is what I saw today, actually. I didn't, I missed this somehow. I didn't know they announced a new expansion. So wow, we got a new WoW expansion and a Diablo expansion in the same year. Not bad at all. And then finally people got to see what Fable looks like. And hey, the gameplay does look good. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit afterwards. But I like it. It looks really interested. interesting. Something uh, I am interested in playing. Um, there are complaints about the character. <laughs> and people wanting to customize their own character. And not be forced to play with this character. But we'll get back to that. Frag Punk. Uh, what the heck is this? Cards, battle passes, all that. Just not interested. It looks like an Overwatch clone. But don't take my word for it. The games that I move on from, I'm just not interested. And in. maybe they come out and they're really good. Like, I'm sure this is a good game for its genre. But I probably won't get it. But it does look good, I mean, for what it is wouldn't knock it down I'd probably enjoy this too just chilling through the single player it's a oh but it's ah oh, I thought it was a single player campaign if it's an un annoying survival game I'm not gonna like it mixtape music and story uh, yeah no no interest on that life is strange returns to its classic character with a new entry entry I never played the sequel or the expansions I did play the first one I thought it was cool. So if they're trying to capture what made the first one good, why not? Then you have Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, these games, I think they release yearly. Which, they're fun. They are fun to play. Indiana Jones, that was another good one to see Wu Chang um, is this another Souls game I mean this is one of the ones people are anticipating but uh, it's just oversaturated like it looks good but it's like come on man make your own type of like not everything has to be like Souls and difficult and annoying at the same time Avowed looks good. I'm looking forward to that. I was surprised by the graphics. I thought it was going to be more realistic. I see it kind of artistic, kind of cartoony. Uh, do they show? Yeah, they do show some gameplay first person. It's like a cartoony Dark, dark Messiah. Adam Fall, I don't know what this is 
Oh. The Sniper Elite team made this. Okay. Interesting. Survival action game. This looks good. This looks really good. And, uh, okay, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Um, this is where I mentioned that uh, characters don't matter until I see the gameplay. And when I saw the gameplay, it, it looks really good. Like, my only complaint is that they're not going to ever tell us what happened to the original out of the animus story. Which uh, I think fans have moved on from that. But it would be nice to get uh, another another like thing to make Assassin's Creed interesting again. Without just using the title. But yeah, it looks good. I mean, the character looks good in action too. See, he's like a heavy, strong warrior. Rushes head on. And then you got the stealth character. And they showed some very good stealth uh, in this game. And I think it was during the live demo. But it looked really good. So if you're on the fence just because of the characters, I'd, I'd recommend, like, give the game a try. Don't don't be uh, on the fence just because it's not realistic in history because this game isn't really like what it is realistic in is like showing the ancient times, showing the buildings, the monuments and all that. And even though they try with certain characters, even though it's not exactly like the history, I wouldn't I wouldn't not want to play just because of that. And I get what some people are saying that they don't want to play it because companies are going to continue doing this trend where they might be changing history and trying to make us believe something that didn't happen. Or, But at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> they had what, Assassin's Creed 3, they had George Washington D DLC, which definitely didn't happen. You didn't turn into a bird and fly around, so... Don't be stuck on that. Just not want to play a game because of that. Stalker 2. This looked really good. I was, I was actually surprised. Part 1 was uh was tough to play. I remember trying to play. It looks like it's more hands-on. Doesn't look like it'll be as difficult to play as the first one or to learn. The learning curve. And then they show the new digital Xbox Series X console, which um, I guess the only reason you wouldn't want that is for more space, but I think the disc versions can always be better until we no longer get any discs, obviously. <laughs> and then it will be digital versus streaming. We got the stream box. No, no, we want the digital box. We actually want to download and play quicker. And not have the internet all the time. <laughs> Which is a valid point. Oh, okay. And then uh, Gears, they, that was, uh, that's what they closed with, I think. The actually uh, event. And uh, this is the highlight right here. This, this is what I'm looking forward to. This was my number one pick. Would be this and then Doom. But, um... When I was watching this, I'm like, what's going on? Like, is that Dom? How's he back? What's going on here? And then later you see that, like, you could kind of tell he was young, but I was still wasn't sure until I'm like, okay, E-Day, yeah, this is definitely a prequel. But I thought it was just like a different rend render they were doing, and then they were going to transition to Gear 6 in the future or something. Interesting take to go back here because this is when Gears was dark and gritty and I think that's where fans this is near the time where 360 exploded and what better uh, direction than where the original Gears of War took place 
No, we just hope the multiplayer is as good as the first one, because that really blew up on Xbox back then. As opposed to Gears of War 2, where it had uh, a lot of lag online, a lot of broken stuff, smoke grenade downing. And even some, peop some people might say Gears 3 was the staple, and I disagree with that. I mean, it, w it was definitely the full package with Beast Mode, Horde Mode, co four player co op, uh, long single player. But um, the multiplayer, I feel, still felt short in some instances. It was a lot better direction than Part 2 and a lot more options. But uh, if you were a fan of Gears 1, you were a fan of the shotgunning. 3 was more of the lancering and what they called the stopping power, which I called the lagging power because it really looked like your character was just lagging in place and lock up of uh, weapons at times where it shouldn't have been. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this either way. I wonder if it looks like it's going to only be two-player co-op. That was one one strong thing about Gears 3 was the four-player co-op. Black Ops 6. I don't get it. Uh, they showed it at the beginning. Was this more gameplay or something? Well, it looks sort of like a developer diary. Yeah, where they just talk about what they showed in the beginning. Okay, so yeah, definitely an A, Xbox wins. B, Ubisoft beat Sony beat the first day of trailers. And then uh, Ubisoft was uh, last. Um, I mean, they're, they're probably, a C, I'd say, uh, a C also with uh, Sony. Oh, and this is actually where I saw the Assassin's Creed gameplay, which I'll get to that. So they showed Star Wars Outlaws. There you go, the chat chin again, and that's what I'm going to get into soon. Um, the game looks good. Uh, who knows, Ubisoft, there's a lot of grinding usually in their game, so we'll wait till it comes out. So uh, they showed, I was disappointed with this trailer, like a 30 second teaser is basically what it was. It's good they're uh, going back and they heard the fans complain about what they showed earlier with the remake and hopefully it looks a lot better. And it looks like they're really paying good attention to this. I do want to see a new full 3D Prince of Persia game, but it looks like they, they found success in the 2D genre. And then this this is the gameplay deep dive. So my bad, it wasn't on in the Microsoft event. And actually this, I'd probably give Ubisoft over Sony just because of the showing. I'd give them a C plus actually. And this isn't it. <laughs> this is the music performance. Uh, there's Anno, Strategy, Prince of Persian, DLC, which is good. It found success. Avatar, I never got a chance to play it. I'm surprised they're still supporting it. X Defiant is supposed to be the Call of Duty competitor. And then you got Skull and Bones, complete piece of crap. Uh, I was su surprised they're still going with the crew. And where is it? What? So it's supposed to be the gameplay deep dive. But it looks like they messed up on the website here. But see like there's choices who to play with and she goes in stealth mode and it's actual stealth killing. It's not like an RPG you you sneak up, you kill someone and then you just see a little bit of life bar come on. She actually like chokes them with this uh whip. Definitely uh recommend checking this out this is a uh, looks like a boss fight um kind of looks like ghost of tsushima here i don't think they're gonna do it better than ghost of tsushima but in the stealth department definitely and possibly the storytelling we'll see who knows i mean it's too early to say but what i can say is the stealth i think will do a lot better with assassin's creed traversal and climbing and all that Okay, this is where I move on. <laughs> and before I was... I mean, this is going to be quick. I'm not going to really d dive too deep into all this controversy and the cultural war. But it's definitely happening. And um, 
it seems that maybe it's not the developers, maybe it's the publishers, maybe it's whoever's getting that extra money, DI money. I don't know what it is. I don't know for sure, but it is definitely happening. And I call this the chat chins, and as you see here with Perfect Dark, which I'm still going to play the game. The character does not determine whether or not I'm going to play and enjoy the game, but you can definitely see this is happening. So Silent Hill, I wasn't too sure, and it's happening across many, many games. You see with Perfect Dark here, and then you see with Fable, the, the you know, the posture, manly look, hero look. Um, the boss now... This one I'm not too sure, uh, you know, they did mention mo-capping stuff, and if you look here, I don't, th th this was also mo-capped, but they did, like, someone had a comparison where they did increase the chin size, and I mean, it's not a big deal, <laughs> but it is, it seems like they're purposely doing this, and the boss was always kind of like the soldier anyways, but I mean, if you compare the boss to the the actual how it how she looked, I mean, let me see. It's been so long. Yeah, I mean that's cartoony, but yeah, like even even here, you know, see, still see. Well, then again, I don't know. It's c it's close. Just just they they shouldn't mess with Eva. I hope they don't mess with Eva at all. Was that Eva? Oh, that's also the boss. So yeah, I mean that that is a a big change, and that's what I was saying last week. I hope they don't touch Metal Gear. <laughs> but could it be for mocap reasons? But I don't believe it anymore. It's like two one to one, and oh, he commented on it. Yep, <laughs> that's what I was saying. <laughs> it seems like a, some political, cultural war, and I, I don't know the reasoning for it. And and having the Chechens, <laughs> Eva, no, Eva, Eva, okay. So l let's wait to see her, like, I mean, this is how you saw her in Snake Eater. So they haven't shown anything about Eva yet. So that would be an interesting to see and an interesting update to make. But <laughs> this is hilarious that this came up. And there's the Chechen. And then there's Star Wars Outlaws. And then uh, this reminded me a lot of uh, the uh, show Supergirl, which where season two, they were kind of making her uh, more revealing. And then by season five, they're like, nope, have the, the straight hair covering here, have the you know, it's definitely done for a reason, and that reason I really don't care. It's just, let's see how the game turns out. As long as they didn't mess with my boy uh, Snake, Big Boss. And like Silent Hill 2, James Sutherland, and... But now here's the other thing. It's like, with Fable... They basically took Geralt and just instead made it a woman. <laughs> and I don't know if you're going to be able to customize the character. It doesn't look like you can. But she reminds me so much of G Geralt just being a woman. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, it's like purposely done. And they're trying to build this new action hero with Fable, which it might work and it might backfire. It's just allowing us to customize is a lot better. Like versus Perfect Dark Zero where, you know, okay, yeah, that's Kate. Where Fable is, I guess it's a new developer, so they're trying to create a new character. But look, <laughs> I mean, the freckles, <laughs> the chin, I don't know, like. It's it's too common now, like, I don't understand why. And then you go to Summer Showcase, and the first category, they got women-led games. Like, where, where's Gears of War with the men-led games? <laughs> but now I'm, I'm reaching too far. But I'm just pointing out, yeah, it's, it's being done purposely, and 
I'm not complaining about it. I'm still playing these games. It's just, I don't know why you have to do it this certain way. It makes not much sense to me. If it's r- really being done this way, I mean, we, we've had mocap where the characters have looked differently, and then see here. I mean, the, the uh, cultural war, it's like they don't want you to see women sexy. So that that's why they're they're doing it this way. They want you to look at the character to be strong, fit, and I guess give women that idea that they can maybe do it this way. I don't know. I honestly don't even know, but yeah. I just want to say that, yeah, I see it, and I agree they're doing it on purpose. But again, I'm just going to play the games and enjoy them. Like Assassin's Creed Shadows still still interests me, still playing good. And yeah, I see no reason to get to like some stupid cultural war over it. Um, And I do see why gamers though are pissed off when they take existing properties and add their own twist on it. Now when I talk to other people about the best Fable, they go back to Fable 1. They're like, hey, I enjoyed 1, I'm going to replay 1, I don't care for 2 and 3, 2 added guns. That was a big controversy back then about guns, but it was still a fun game to me. And then part three was Becoming King and then Peter Molyneux telling us all this bullshit that never came true. So there was the controversy of that. So there's always something. End of the day, play the game. You don't like it, just don't buy it. Simple as that. And when you don't buy it, and that's I guess what they're saying, the reason some people don't want to buy it is because the characters and then to kind of teach the developers a lesson to not release something like this again but it's not a big deal with Assassin's Creed it's really I mean it's it's still a good game like I could understand it more with like maybe Fable or Dragon Age where you can customize your character and I'm forcing you to play a certain character instead of customizing a character Um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla they did if I remember correctly like customized but like Odyssey and Origins it was a set character you could just change the looks of like the the paint and the the outfits so that's kind of what Shadows looks more leaning towards Origin and Odyssey and less of Valhalla Valhalla where it was just do you want the male or the female actually Odyssey was the similar thing it was actually Alex Alexios or Alex was it Alexander? I can't even remember his name. Or Cassandra. And then they went ahead and made Cassandra the real uh, character throughout, which I thought was stupid. I thought it should have went with whatever character you got and transferred your saves forward. So in that situation, if a, if someone complained, I understand that more so as to say, oh, he's black, I don't want to get the game. That does sound very racist and doesn't look look good on someone's someone's point of view especially where they're showing like hey he's just he he's a native to the land that's what they showed in the trailer so they explain it a lot more but uh the, the other complaints about the ch- the jaw thing i mean you don't see it on on her she looks you know she looks good she looks like an assassin the the way it should be and that's the new hook But yeah, I think uh, I think I covered most of the topics. I did say I wanted to cover an older topic. Part two. Um, so this is very old, and I'm bringing this up because so it's finally coming to PC, which is a good thing because finally people can mod it and do what they want with this ugly ass character. This is the Chad of Chad Chins of all <laughs> women characters. Hopefully they do some alternative ending, alternative story writing that just blows away Hill Druckmann's uh, Last of Us 2 with the mod. Like, let us play with Joel more often and uh, have him survive. Create the real canon version to The Last of Us. Because this was a terrible story. And I give it a 6 out of 10 because... 
as a rating because the environments were still good. The pacing was bad, actually. The, s the story pacing was bad. Just the environments, the gameplay was still good. And then there was the promise of multiplayer, and that's what I actually wanted to talk about. Uh, what was the, uh, the genre called? Not survival. So so they ditched the uh, multiplayer DLC. Ah, uh, roguelike. They ditched the multiplayer mode and then just released it on PS5 and charged you 10 bucks to upgrade to the roguelike mode. And that is just terrible. Like, when this released, they advertised that they would work on the multiplayer and literally all they had to do was take last of one last of us one multiplayer and put it in part two and just update a few things here and there and deliver on what they promised so even that was false advertising so all of last of us part two was false ad advertising with the joel being uh, tricking people in the trailers and then all the ultimately to the end till the end of the multiplayer like everything fans wanted they did the complete opposite and yeah it's just it's terrible and then in the end they charge you 10 bucks for the roguelike mode which should be completely free it should be a complete free upgrade and I don't even know what it was called oh it's right here no return so it costs 40 bucks but if i sign in here let me see hopefully it doesn't show my password while i'm here just move it to the side for a second here and it looks like i don't even remember my password Oh, there we go. I just got to verify it. Because I want to show you guys how they're charging 10 bucks to upgrade on a game that they sold originally for $60. $60. I did get it with uh, Sony Rewards and only had to pay 10 when it released. But still, PS5 digital upgrade 10 bucks. This should be completely free. Like, shame on Naughty Dog, shame on uh, Neil Druckmann, stealing everyone's success from Uncharted 4 to Last of Us 2. <laughs> and then, uh, if you look at the games they released, Last of Us Remake, Part 1, which I get it 10 years later, you, want, you can make a remake, that's how the movie industry works, but it did not need a remake. And if anything, they ruined the vision and the look with a remake. I haven't played it. But just looking at the trailers, it does look more realistic with the graphics, but it still had a darker tone, part one. And I like, I don't even want to risk playing the new part one version because who knows what hidden agendas and politics, political crap that Neil Druckmann added, like the TV show, <laughs> which was, uh, like, it, it doesn't really do it justice. The pacing, like the skipping, how fast it went through. The Last of Us Part 1 was way too quickly and instead focused on something you saw in a small magazine which didn't make much sense to even continuing that and he even admitted tricking people which like that that's all that's all Naughty Dog with Neil Druckmann as president has been doing is tricking people into buying and watching his products and uh, with uh, season 2 it looks like it's gonna branch out maybe 3 seasons of the Last of Us Part Two, which it's probably going to show more Joel of and more of the prequels, and then going forward while he works on Part Three and releases it. So we'll see what happens. Either way, this is, if anything, honestly, Naughty Dog's been more of a scammer than anyone. But yeah, they're not getting my ten bucks. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching. This dragged on longer than I wanted it to, but. Uh, moving forward, I don't know. I don't know what I'll cover, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what other announcements come out, and maybe I'll tackle some old topics such as this, but it's kind of relevant because the show is coming out again. But yeah, 
And then uh, you, oh, also you got Neil Druckmann. Apparently they're working on a new, new a new game. And by the way, yeah, he he's just always in the news, news articles for like. Some of these journalists believe he's like Kashima and Shigeru Miyamoto, which again he's nowhere near their level, and it's a disgrace to say he is. And I will leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Until next time.